Welcome back to Vectors and Relativity. This time we're going to be doing the hardest section, which is Relative Velocity in 2D. Alright guys, Relative Velocity, but this time we're going to be doing some problems in 2D. So let's look at this. A plane travels with a velocity of 80 miles an hour north with respect to the air. Determine the velocity of the plane relative to the ground if it encounters wind at 10 miles an hour north. So let's say this plane right here is going 80 miles an hour and then wind comes up and picks it up and goes another 10 miles an hour what we should know is since it's going in the same direction it's going to be going even faster so we're going to say this plane now gets a boost from the wind going 90 miles an hour north so but let's see what happens if it goes 10 miles an hour south so in this case, what's going to happen is the plane is going 80 miles an hour. However, the wind is going the other way 10 miles an hour. What this does is it makes the resultant vector go from where you started to where you ended up. Not as much, so you don't add this time, you're going to subtract because you're go he's going against the wind. So it's going to be slowing down the plane, going 70 miles an hour, but still north. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So it says 10 miles an hour west. So now we're going to use our knowledge of vectors to do this. So the plane is going 80 miles an hour, but then wind is pushing it to the left 10 miles an hour. What we have to do now is to find how fast it's going relative to the ground is we need to find what this result, resultant vector is. So we're gonna do some, we're gonna do some math, and then we're gonna do the Pythagorean theorem, and then we figure out that it's gonna be equal to 80.6 miles an hour. So the wind makes it go a little bit faster. And then we're gonna do the inverse of tan, and then we're gonna find that this is gonna be equal to uh, opposite, which is 10 divided by 80, 7.13 degrees, 7.13 degrees, and yes, so we could also say this is going to be west of north, west of north. Okay, the next one right here, we're going to do the same thing, but the wind is going in the eastward direction this time, so it's a little bit different. So we have the plane going 80 miles an hour, and then it's going to the east, 60 miles an hour. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding the resultant vector and the angle. And we know it's going to be going, when we combine use Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be going 100 miles an hour at an angle of, let's see, opposite which is 60 divided by 80 36.87 degrees and this is going to be east of north okay and this is how we do 2d relativity problems so the wind is going to be making it go faster well in all the cases except this one where it's going against it but we have this is how we figure out how much fast it's going and what direction it's going to start pulling the airplane all right, next problem, number 20. The presence airplane, Air Force One, flies at 200 meters per second to the east with respect to the air. The air is moving at 35 meters per second to the north with respect to the ground. Find the velocity of Air Force One with respect to the ground. So again, the airplane is going 250 meters per second and then the wind is pushing it upwards 35 meters per second. And we wanna know what the velocity is. So, well again, we're gonna find the uh, resultant, resultant vector. And what we can see is this is gonna be equal to 252.44 meters per second at an angle of 7.97 degrees, okay? 
We're gonna do tan to find that. And we're gonna use Pythagorean theorem. Maybe I should show it. So, uh, Pythagorean theorem, a squared, 250 squared, plus 35 squared equals r squared. So the resultant vector is gonna be equal to 250 squared plus 35 squared. And then we get that as our answer. And then to find the angle, we're going to use inverse tan, which is opposite 35 divided by 250. And this gives us an angle of 7.97. Okay. All right, next problem. Now there's a few problems involving boats, which are a little bit difficult. Uh, students usually have a harder time with this within the chapter. A boat is traveling across a river with a speed of 4 meters per second north. When it encounters a, encounters a river which is flowing east with a speed of 2 meters per second. If the river is 120 meters across, what is the boat's velocity with the current? Okay, let's just draw things out. 120 meters. This boat is trying to go 4 meters per second north. And the current is pushing it to the east 2 meters per second. So how this is going to be flowing is, it's going to look like this, but it's going to move like that. Okay? What is the boat's velocity with the current? So the boat's going to be trying to go 4 meters per second north, but then the current's going to be pushing it this way 2 meters per second. So we can find what the velocity is with the current by finding the resultant vector. And again, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to do that. So we're going to do the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared. And this is going to give us an answer of 4.47 meters per second. Okay. Now, the question is, how long will it take to cross? So when we're going to, it's going to start moving, it's going to go like that. And we're looking for how long will it take to cross. So there's a few ways we can do this problem. We could figure out, okay, um, it's going to be going this way, 4.47 meters per second. And then what we could do is we could find out, once we know the angle of this, we could find out this distance right here. And maybe let's, let's try to do that. So let's first find the angle. So we know the angle is going to be tan inverse opposite 2 divided by 4. And this is going to give us an angle of tan 2 divided by 4 of 26.57. So I don't know. I don't know what this length is. However, I know that this length right here is 120 meters and the angle between these two is 26.57 degrees this way i can find out what this distance is going to be the distance is going to be equal to um 120 uh well let me just i guess just use uh, cosine so cosine of 26.57 is going to be equal to adjacent, which is this side right here, which is 120, divided by the hypotenuse, which is D. And this gives us 120 divided by cosine of 26.57, 134.17 meters. So I know that this is going to be 134.17 meters. And now I know the speed. The speed is again uh, going to be 4.47 meters uh, per second. So speed is equal to 4.47 meters per second. And now we can just look for time. So speed is equal to distance over time. 4.47 is equal to 134.17 divided by t. And t will equal divided by 4.47, 30 seconds, okay? But there's another way to do this problem which I wanna show you because it's a lot easier and it's what I want to start doing, I'll uh, start showing how to do later on. 
So another way you could do this is we want to find how much it goes across. So we just we're just going to care about everything that's happening in the y direction. So what this means is we know this boat is going to be moving in the y direction with a speed of 4 meters per second. It's going to be moving a distance in the y direction. Distance in the y direction, which is going to be equal to 120 meters. And now we're, we can just look for time. So we know velocity is equal to the displacement in the y divided by time. So 4 is equal to 120 divided by t. And we get t is equal to 30 seconds. This is really important, important because um, what it shows is what's happening in the x direction doesn't affect what's happening in the y direction. So what that means is even if this current was going like 500 meters per second and this boat was going upwards 4 meters per second, it's still going to get to the other side in 30 seconds. It might be a lot further down the stream if it's going, if the current's a lot faster, but if you're if you're pedaling north, you're going to get to the other side at the same exact amount of time. So we're going to be using this method because it's easier. Okay? Now the next question is, how far downstream do you end up? So we're looking for how far does the boat end up when it goes downstream? So there's a few ways to do this. Again, we can use Sokotoa to figure this out. But I want to use this method. So for Looking at the x direction, just how far it goes in the x direction, let's just find everything we know in the x direction. So we know that the boat's going to be moving in the x direction with the current, which is 2 meters per second. It's going to be in the water for 30 seconds. And then we can find the displacement. Displacement divided by time. So now we have 2 is equal to displacement divided by time which is 30 seconds and then we get displacement is equal to 60 meters. You could have done Sokotoa to figure that out over here and it would have gotten the same thing. So for example if we would have done um, let's see do a tan let's do tan. Tan of 26.57 equals opposite which is the displacement divided by adjacent, which is 120, we get the displacement equal to tan of 26.57 times 120, which is equal to 60 uh, meters. So we get the same answer, okay? Again, I like to use this method more because this also helps out with our next chapter with projectile motion. So I'm gonna be showing more how to do it with this method here, even if it's not as intuitive. Okay. Next problem. A person is in a motorboat that is capable of a maximum speed of 10 kilometers an hour in still water. She wishes to cross a two kilometer wide river to, point, to a point directly across from the starting point. If the speed of the water in the river is six kilometers an hour, how much time is required for the crossing, assuming the boat is moving at its maximum speed? Okay. So, this one's a bit more difficult. What we have is we have this river, and this river is flowing, and this boat wants to go directly across. Uh, so, again, this is two kilometers wide. And for the boat to go directly across, let's say the boat is around here, for the boat to go directly across, it's going to have to point the front of it around here because it has to fight against the current. The current is pushing it to the right. Six kilometers an hour. So in order to fight the current and to go across, it's going to have to point in some general direction this way, going 10 kilometers an hour. 10 kilometers an hour. Okay. What? So this is where it becomes a little bit tricky. If it's pushing it to the right 6 kilometers an hour, what we need to know is we need to cancel that out, allowing the boat to go against it six kilometers an hour to the left. Okay. 
So how much time is required for the crossing? Now, what we wanna do is we wanna find everything in the y direction. So we wanna find what the velocity in the y direction is gonna be. Uh, we know displacement in the y is equal to two kilometers. We wanna find what the velocity of the y is, which is gonna be 10. Oh, mm, I guess we'll use some, let's see, Pythagorean theorem. So we'll do 10 squared plus or minus six squared is equal to b velocity in the y squared. So we'll just do that. Minus six squared. And this is gonna be equal to 5.1. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, it's gonna equal eight meters per second. So we have this going eight meter, oh sorry, not eight meters per second, eight kilometers per hour. Okay. So we have this going eight kilometers an hour in the y direction. So now that we know what's moving in the y direction, uh, then we can find the time. How long it's gonna take to get to the other side. Just gonna do velocity in the y is equal to displacement in the y divided by time. 8 is equal to 2 over t and then we get t is going to be equal to 2 over 8 which is 0 0.25 hours okay what will be the orientation of the boat as it as it moves across the river will it be straight or angled in a certain direction and as i said it's going to be angled to the left We'll do more of this in the next video.